30 seconds. Good morning. I'm Pastor Steve Talmadge, and along with Pastor Nendek Christofferson, we welcome you to our Sunday worship here at 9 o'clock in the Center of Compassion and online. Today is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday. We're in the season of Epiphany. We celebrate God revealing Jesus' identity to all who are listening and watching and observing. We want to uh, uh, thank all the volunteers we had who served as part of our hospitality to the families uh, we provided shelter and meals to this past week through Family, uh, family Promise. So thank you for giving your gift of time and, and maybe your cooking specialties or spending the night here. The hospitality team will be meeting tomorrow night at 6.30 in our outreach room. And also after this service, uh, we have a warm room. Our, our outreach room is warm with coffee and goodies. So if you want to enjoy some fellowship after our service, just go straight past the playground. The Thaddeus Rose concert has been canceled. So if you purchase tickets, uh, you, you can get a refund from the church office. Just contact uh, the Dick Beckman and you can get that. Uh, the Grand Canyon Synod is offering a special uh, commemorative service celebrating Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, holiday at King of Glory Lutheran Church in Tempe. That's next Sunday from 2 to 4. All are welcome. And in two weeks, our Bishop Deborah Hutterer will be with us at all three services. Let us now prepare to worship God. Stand and let's join in singing with the band. Good morning. As we consider uh, today, this first uh, Sunday of Epiphany, as we consider Christ's baptism by John the Baptist, we need some holy water. again. God, I'm begging, please again. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Walking down these desert roads, water for my thirsty soul. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet Like a sound of the symphony to my ears, like holy water on my skin. Dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. So take me to the riverside. Take me under baptized. I need you. Oh, God, I need you. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. It's like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water on my skin. I don't want to abuse your grace. God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. I don't want to abuse your grace. 
God, I need it every day. It's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change. Your forgiveness is like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water, your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips. Like the sound of a symphony to my ears. It's like holy water. Let's praise him this morning. He is the light of the world. God of creation, we sing hallelujah, for you have shown your light through the one named Jesus. You've descended down to our level so that all might know you want to be in relationship. You want to restore and redeem and release. 
We pray, O oh Lord, that as we gather as people of God in this place, remembering our baptism, remembering our claim as being a son and daughter of God, we know how much we are loved and how much we're called to love others. Allow us to be people of praise in the midst of despair. Allow us to be people of hope in the midst of discouragement. Allow us to be people of light when darkness engulfs. In your holy and precious name we pray, amen. Invite the children up for the children's message. One, 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 two, three, one. It's nice to see you guys again. Did you have a happy new year? A good Christmas? Yeah, so you guys are going to have to bear with me because I kind of had an idea when I saw this star and I thought of it and then it kind of left me. And then I thought of this Friday night when I was here with Family Promise and all of a sudden my idea left me. So we're going to do some stargazing. See the star? Do you see other stars around here? There was a really important date in our church yesterday. It was called Epiphany. Can you say Epiphany? Epiphany is when the star was out and the wise men were following it. And they followed the star and what did they find? Yes, it was an epiphany. It was an aha. It was, wow, we have found the Christ child, the one who has come to save us. Okay? And today marks Jesus' baptism. So we're going to stargaze as well as look at where we find the presence of Christ. So I have some stars, and we're going to do a stargazing tour of our worship area. How does that sound? Does that sound good? You guys ready to enter the, to the spaceship? Yeah. yeah. And the spaceship is just time traveling. It just travels really fast. So we're going to go stand way over here. Can you come over here? Yeah, follow the star, right? Now, would I want to put a star on here? Would I hear Christ right here at this lectern? I would, wouldn't I? The person who reads the gospel, who reads the words of God, they are sharing Christ with us. So I'm going to give you this. And I'm going to have you tape it on there. Each of you will get a turn to tape something on, okay? And just tape it right here. Where are some other areas that we might see Christ's presence? Hmm. What about, oh, up there, absolutely, on the altar. We might hear a voice that reminds us of Jesus and following God. All right, you can just put that right there on the altar. Yeah. Hmm, let's keep looking. Where else? Oh, wow, you guys are driving the starship really good. What's this called? This is called a baptismal font. It's a real shell. And this is where we are baptized. And here we receive the Spirit of God through water and word. Through God's grace. Right? There's another place. <gasps> yeah, the Lord's Supper, right? Miles, can you help us here? And you can tape a star right here. Can you take the piece of tape? Can you take it off of my finger? There you go. You can put it right there. All right. Thank you, Miles. Good job. Yeah. And is there anywhere else? Hmm. Oh, the piano. We sing the word of God, right? We hear. Well, we can't quite put it up on the cross, but I think we're missing something really special. We can put one right there. Where else do we see Christ? Hmm, I'm looking out. Any ideas? 
where else we might see Christ? <gasps> I see some out there. Do you see people raising their hands? Let's go out in the middle here. And right here in the middle of our worship center, we have Christ's presence through all of the people. Well, we don't have a star for everyone, but I'm going to give each of you a star, and we're going to pray, okay? All right, there you go. All right, and let's pray and repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for your light that shines for us and through us. Might we be a light of Christ for others. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, you may go to Sunday school. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. 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 This morning's gospel comes from the book of Mark, chapter 1. Verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This ends our gospel. Praise to you, Christ. Good morning. What makes something remarkable? What is it that makes you stop and say, that is remarkable? Is it something that you see in nature, perhaps a sunrise or a sunset? Is it something as you're out in God's creation, as you watch a hummingbird looking for the correct flower to find the nectar that it needs? Do you say, remarkable? Perhaps you look to sports to find something remarkable, as you see great athleticism displayed on the field, and you are simply taken aback and go, that's remarkable. Maybe it's something in the news, something that catches your eye, something you hear, an article you read, and you stop and pause and reflect and say, that's remarkable. When we look back to the word remarkable, as we look to this word remarkable, and we look back on history, on world history, we might see lots of remarkable events. Remarkable events that define and change the world. And the world never goes back to how it was before. We can look to recent events in our history, recent events such as 9-11 in 2001, where the United States experienced terrorism, and it changed us. It certainly changed how we go through airports 
and defined that very differently. We don't have to go back very far, just a few years to the pandemic, to 2020. And we might not want to call it a remarkable event, but it was an event in which the world experienced it. It was an event that defined us. It was an event that we are still going through some of the changes that that event caused upon our very lives. Because you see, when something is remarkable, it defines an event. It defines us and sometimes even changes us. Now, while we can have these big worldwide remarkable events, we also have remarkable events in our personal lives as well. Remarkable events such as a wedding or a marriage, a remarkable event of becoming a new parent, a remarkable event of a grandparent, Something that defines us and brings to us possibly a new name is remarkable. When something is remarkable, it causes us to stop and pause, and it affects us. It can redefine us and move us into a whole new direction. There's another thing about when something is remarkable. Because it defines us, and because oftentimes remarkable events are something that are big, something that is remarkable connects us as people. We've all been through COVID. We are all connected by that event to one another. And whether it's a personal thing that has happened to us in remarkableness, or something that's a world event. It shows us how important connectivity to one another is. How we are creatures that are created to be connected. Going back to the very beginning where God tells Adam, it is not good for you to be alone. God has created us for community. God has instilled with us a longing to belong. And that's remarkable. Would you please pray with me? Good and gracious God, in the season of Epiphany, you bring to us the gift of your Son, the light of the world. We often don't stop and pause and think about the remarkableness of this gift. Enlighten us this day, Lord. Enlighten us with the gift of your son and the baptism of which he did. Show us the sacredness and help us to see that this baptism is remarkable, life-defining. Father, Spirit, Jesus, may you enter into the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts, and may it be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. We find ourselves this year in lectionary year B, which means we will be spending this whole year in the Gospel of Mark. We will have some interludes with the Gospel of John. But the Gospel of Mark is known for its shortness. It's known or thought to be one of the first uh, Gospels that was written. And it's concise. The Gospel writer doesn't choose to give a lot of background like Matthew or Luke does and isn't considered nearly as chatty or philosophical as the Gospel of John. The Gospel writer brings to us a conciseness. He has a story to tell, a narrative to share. And he wants to share it immediately. This gospel writer also brings to us a perspective, a perspective of Jesus. He's not afraid to show Jesus's frailty and Jesus's failures. He's not afraid to show us Jesus as human. As we look at our reading today, we find ourselves 
being dumped right into the middle of an event, a big event. We see John the Baptist is in the wilderness. Now, as we read this, we might look at that and go, so John the Baptist is in the wilderness. That's where he belongs. For heaven's sake, he's wearing camel's hair and he eats locusts. He wouldn't exactly fit into the city life of Jerusalem. But as 21st listeners and hearers and readers of the word, it's easy for us to miss the cultural context of first century Palestine. It's easy for us to miss how important and how big this event was. John the Baptist is out in the wilderness and people are flocking to him. They are leaving the epicenter. They are leaving Jerusalem. They are leaving the temple. This is big news because the temple is where God is. The temple is where there are all the purification rites for a devout Jew. The temple is the epicenter of all religious life for Judaism. And people are being called out. What is it about John the Baptist that drives them in droves to go see him, to go hear him? Is it because he's authentic, he's real, he brings to them something new, and they're tired of the institutionalized dogma, tired of the authority? Is it because God is up to something new? As we look to the season between Christmas and Lent, we find ourselves being asked to put away, to set aside the miraculous birth of Jesus, to set aside the choirs of angels, and to look to a God who is mighty, who is powerful, and yet whose love and grace is found in the mundane things of life, in the simple things, in the common things. To see God in the everyday ordinariness of life. To hear God in voices. To see God in clouds, in the sky. To see God in the muddy waters of the Jordan River. And it is here that Jesus walks into the water of the Jordan and John baptizes him. It reminds us of our sacred sacrament of baptism. It shows us the beginnings of it, how God uses something as common and as simple as water. God blesses it, enters into it. And we see Jesus being affirmed. When you think of Jesus' baptism, what words would you use to define it? What adjectives would you use to describe it? Would the word chaotic come to mind? Would voices come to mind? Would sacred, holy, ancient, or ritual come to mind? I ask you to think, would the word remarkable come to mind? For as we look at Jesus' baptism, we see a remarkable event, a defining event. For Jesus hears the words of God say to him, you are my son, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus receives affirmation. He receives an identity as the Son of God. And as the dove comes down, and, and some of us might think of the dove, fl dove flying nicely down from heaven, maybe the dove is just making a big old dive from heaven, resting upon Jesus with the gift of the Holy Spirit. But it's easy to miss something else in this text. It's easy to miss that 
in Mark's concise manner, he says, as Jesus looked up from the water in verse 10, that the heavens were ripped apart or the heavens were torn apart. This is beautiful imagery, but it's also powerful. Brian Stoffigan tells us that this powerful imagery reminds us of Mark inviting us into a bigger narrative of Jesus, into a bigger narrative of who God is. That this beautiful image of the heavens being torn open and ripped apart is God's intrusion into our world. The intrusion of God into a world that is not expecting him. The intrusion of God into death and life. The intrusion of God showing us our interconnectedness and his desire for that. The intrusion of God into our everydayness of our life. As we embrace the baptism of Jesus today, there is a big picture, a big picture of God coming into the world, bringing to us his grace through the common and ordinariness of our life, sealing us with the gift of the Holy Spirit and defining us as his beloved child. Baptism reminds us that there are no boundaries between humanity. Baptism reminds us that it's not about race or nationality or any other affiliation. That God comes to us in grace and love. Many times we look at baptism and we call it a means of grace. A means of grace in which God comes to us through the simple and ordinariness of water. And in our baptism, we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit, sealed and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And it is God's remarkable grace that defines us as his child, his beloved child. And we are changed. Remarkable. Remarkable grace. Remarkable love. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we continue to uh, reflect on the, on the words... This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We realize what a beautiful name it is. You were the word at the beginning. One with God the Lord most high 
your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you our Christ what a beautiful name it is what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Christ my King what a beautiful name it is nothing compares to this what a beautiful name it is the name of Jesus Laura will sing verse 2 you didn't want heaven without us so Jesus pray. For the baptized across the globe, may we bear your light of salvation and share your gift of forgiveness and love. We're all created in your image, Lord, in your mercy. For the healing of creation, for gratitude for your abundant provision, and for recognition that each generation bears responsibility of what future generations will inherit. Lord, in your mercy. For all who work for peace and justice, whether diplomat, soldier, community leader, faith worker, or family advocate, Lord, in your mercy. For those struggling to make ends meet, to provide shelter, or to find affordable and safe childcare. Lord, in your mercy. For those we name in silence who need your healing comfort and direction.
for all who are on our Love of Christ prayer list, and especially we name today Eric, Ron, Sharon, Jackie, Gerald, Ann, Ken, John, Peter, Kyler, Jerry, Kim, Jan, Rob, Julie, Jeremy, Ethan, and Annas. Lord, in your mercy. For those walking through the valley of loss and sorrow, especially Robbie Robinson and family upon the death of his wife, Chris, family and friends of IHOP volunteer Becky Sparks, Denise Noblock and family upon the death of her sister, Katie. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We listen to our introduction of new, mu new music. I don't have to be perfect to get inside the door. I don't have to be good to be loved. If it's true that my wounds are what the healer's looking for, then it's a good thing I got more than enough. Hallelujah, there's a place for me. The company of sinners saved by grace. Here among the broken on their knees Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, there's a place for me If the losers and the lowly are the ones that you call blessed If my weakness shows the power of your blood If my failures preach the gospel more than my success And it's a good thing I got more than enough Hallelujah, there's a place for me, the company of sinners saved by grace. Here among the broken on and knees, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, there's a place for me. I'm part of the family now, I know I belong, if I'm up or if I'm down, I know I belong. I'm part If I'm up or if I'm down, I know I belong, I know I belong. Hallelujah, there's a place for me in the company of sin saved by grace. Here among the broken on their knees, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, there's a place for me. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, there's a place for me. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. Then he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took a cup. He gave thanks. And then he offered it for all to drink saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son. By your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in the world. That more and more we'll give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Angels we have heard on our sweetly singing all the plain and the mountains in reply. Share the good news. Hospitality's in the outreach room. <laughs>